How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Black Desert. I'm your host, Absolute Life Skiller, and today's guide is the Absolute Skills Kuno Guide. Um, there's obviously still the Rabam skills that aren't out yet. Hopefully, they'll be out soon. Uh, those are a quick addition, but um, most of the, I don't think there's too much to go about on those. And Absolute Skills actually do make your pre awakening weapon on your character uh, extremely viable again. And in fact, probably even stronger than some of your awakening attacks. Um, this is only going to go over the Kuno, Kunoichi class um, because this is the main class I play. And uh, I may make a different class, maybe Tamer later, but only if I get like the things I want done on this character. So I'm having my efforts focused on this right now since a lot of people are asking, how come you quit Tamer? I didn't actually really quit, I just kind of put her to the side for a moment and I focused on my Kuno. So we'll just go over these skills right now. All right, guys, since here we are with absolute skills, we can go with a new look. So first off, um, obviously, the skill points I have is a little bit ridiculous. It's kind of unrealistic for most people because to have this point, uh, this obviously requires a lot of grinding. Um, but for the most part, Awakening, I do have pretty much every skill except for uh, Sospiri of Sonin. Um, Sospiri of Sonin really, uh, I maxed it out just to try it out and it really... This, this skill needs to be either buffed or something, but it, it really no point to take this. Um, all these other skills I take, uh, some people have the flow block jump ta not taken uh, simply because they like the weapon swap or whatever, or they do other things with it. I personally take it because I like the versatility of being able to escape with this uh, backwards far more easily than with the pre-awakening one. Um, and everything else should actually just be taken. Uh, some people might not use Wrath, but I use it because it's a nice chain of super armor with a, a lethal spin spree right after it, um, just to keep yourself in, be able to uh, prevent from being CC'd, basically. Um, so for pre-awakening skills, obviously this is the absolute skills. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, in terms of order, I'm just going to go by order of importance because um, I have almost... I have a lot of the uh, absolute skills already, um, but so more or less, um, it's going to take you a while to get here. I'm like 61 and 16% in, and I got the 61 pre Marnie Stone pre EXP nerf. So that's a lot of grinding for uh, most players these days because Marty Stones and the pre nerf EXP just makes getting to 61 that much easier, but you're going to be lacking like hundreds and hundreds of skill points. Um, so Tendon Cutter is basically one of the ones that are very, very useful. Uh, absolute Tendon Cutter. The damage ratio it just goes extremely high. It's about like a 7,000% increase, and that's without critical included. And it also uh, procs faster. Like the attack speed and animation goes faster, which is extremely useful, hyper useful. Um, I also have uh, Absolute Black Moonlight, just because the AoE on this is extreme and it's really good for PvE. Uh, pretty much about the same damage as a Tendon Cutter, you can pretty much wipe a group with it. And, and both of these two attacks are almost like more damage than some of your Awakening attacks, which is very useful. I I don't, I don't seldomly use Chain Crash in PvE anymore, uh, simply because it just doesn't do enough damage compared to some of the Absolute Pre-Awakenings. Um, Shadow Stomp is something else you might want to take in, uh, in Dilemma with uh, Black Moonlight. Uh, between Black Moonlight or Shadow Stomp, you should take either one if you don't have enough skill points. Uh, just decide between the two. Shadow Stomp is obviously more of like a straight shot. Um, it's not really an AoE skill, but if you line up all the mobs, it's also good for mobility skill as well. The damage on it is just insane because it's like a thousand times eight, um, a thousand plus times eight, and without crit. So obviously, a lot of the problems here that you might notice already is that lack of critical. So critical stats with a lot of the pre-awakening skills is quite important. Most of the awakening skills already have inherent crit on it, uh, so you should try and add your skill add-ons to increase crit somehow. I have mine on ankle cutter, and I use ankle cutter uh, absolute quite a lot as well because the minus 20 DP just makes all these absolute skills hit much harder, um, and it also triggers a 20% crit rate for me. I mix up my crit uh, to be buffed in with uh, elixirs of shock because um, I alchemy a lot. Others might use Margoria meals, uh, Serendia meals are other options, and also um, those those are the main things that you should be running in succession for buffs to get those all ready. Um, there's other skills that I took which was uh, floor sweeping, simply because uh, absolute floor sweeping, that accuracy rate of 5% extra does help a lot, and I feel it makes me feel like the down smash occurs more often with the floor sweeping. Um, so I unspec some kunai throw instead, and I don't cancel shadow stomp with kunai throw anymore. I, sh I cancel it with floor sweeping and and smoke screen. Um, so that's those are some other things as well. 
Uh, Shadow Slash isn't as important. Um, this is just more like I picked it up because I do a lot of PvE instead of PvP. Um, this is probably something later on you can grab later. Um, but Ankle Cutter, um, Ankle Cutter is pretty important along with uh, Shadow Stomp and uh, Black Moonlight. Those things you'll be using quite a lot, and also Shadow Clone too. Shadow Stomp always almost comes after Shadow Clone unless you're a person who likes to pocket the Shadow Clone for 5 seconds and then you weapon swap like, like a madman within 5 seconds and somehow trigger the down or air smash that Shadow Clone offers. Um, that's a really advanced and a lot of finger input. I've done it before, it's, it's quite odd and it also takes a bit of uh, memory, muscle memory like adjustment because once you get used to something it's, it's a bit hard to break out of the pattern um, but it is possible and actually works out pretty devastating if you can actually get the combo down right but it's very difficult so I wouldn't, I'm not really going to go over that that's something you can just try and experiment on your own and try and uh, swap it in and out between your awakening and, and pre-awakening one of the major things I'm, I noticed uh, with the absolute skills is that I swap my awakening to pre-awakening very very often uh, almost like a split down the middle of 50-50 almost. Um, I even use Fatal Blow and uh, Heart Aiming, which is why I have Shadow Slash, because Shadow Slash can go straight into Heart Aiming, which goes straight into Fatal Blow. Um, I didn't take Kunai Stab because uh, the damage itself doesn't seem as overwhelming as Absolute Fatal Blow. Absolute Fatal Blow and the Fatal Blow combo, um, that second hit actually takes the damage of Absolute Fatal Blow. So those two hits are really really high damage it's one five four two it's basically three thousand percent worth of damage with 100 percent crit and it spikes a second time with a five percent extra h of your hp as extra damage so both of those put together is about like six thousand percent which is a uh, um a lot of damage and then it both crits so it's like 12k and then on top of um heart aiming coming first if you land a stun on this and then you do fatal blow right after it goes stun straight into stiffness uh Heart aiming hits pretty much 9,000 just in one poke, and it's got a really high accuracy rating, uh, almost double of what whatever your accuracy is currently. So it's very unlikely it'll miss, and that that itself is really dangerous to deal with if you hit somebody with it. Um, Fox Claw, I throw this out from time to time. This thing actually has quite a big far forward range um, ever since they buffed it a little bit. So this is actually fairly worth using if there's an enemy on the floor or if you just like you can't think of what to do on your combo. A Fox Claw is like the last last ditch effort for me to just chuck out something that does some decent damage. Um, mostly you want to do it on if your enemy is launched in the air or down on the floor. Uh, we would never do it when they're standing up. Um, ghost greeting, absolute. Uh, ghost greeting is very good as well. It incre it gives you the attack speed buff that Shadow Slash normally would have given you. So if you take ghost greeting, I would say probably not take Shadow Slash if you're gonna between the two. Like kind of put these two on the same level because ghost greeting at this at absolute level it gives you the attack speed buff and. The cooldown is pretty much uh, 9 seconds, so you will be able to refresh it all the time. And it's more of an engager, whereas uh, Shadow Slash is more of a repositioning to place yourself either behind the target or something, or move out of the way. Or either that you use that as a movement skill to go into smokescreen cancel into concealment. So you just kind of teleport forward fast well, with super armor. Um, that's, that's the other thing. And then if you mess that up, you might also go into heart aiming. So Shadow Slash is, is slightly more difficult to use as opposed to uh, Ghost Greeting. But if you use Ghost Greeting, you almost instinctively go into Ankle Cutter as a combo because if you tag uh, tag somebody with Ghost Greeting and they get stiffened and then you go Ankle Cutter, then they'll be on the floor. And then if you Floor Sweep, Floor Sweep, assuming they go down, uh, has a chance to down smash, so they might bounce on the floor. And then if you Shadow Storm Cancel, uh, if you Shadow Storm Cancel, then, they, then you'll spike them on the floor. Or on the or in the air if you're fast enough and the down smash has them still in the air, and then you grab them. If you grab them, then you pound them into the floor. They'll be in bound status again, and then you use shadow clone and you you flip on the floor. And then if the down smash triggers, you'll flip them on the floor again. And then uh, as they're bouncing away from you, you fox claw, and the fox claw will catch them midair as they're flying away from you as well. That's uh, a pre awakening combo. And then afterwards, once you once you throw Shadow Clone, you press C to switch, and then you go into Dance Macabre to advance forward and land on where they would have uh, landed from the down smash. This is all assuming that nothing desyncs and everything just works out in uniform 
perfect unison for you and that's that's basically how the combo would actually fly out and it is possible <laughs> it's just very difficult to do um and then like fatal blow if you want if you're even fast enough like you can grab and then fatal blow and then shadow clone and then um that you still have enough time to do that uh one of the more important things as well when skill add-ons is attack speed um, because of all these skills now, to get them all into fitting rotation, you do need a lot of attack speed buffs. Anything that can grant you attack speed, like speed spell, uh, skill awakening speed. Speed. Um, I have lunar. Uh, I have the light of blast with speed now. I have like uh, shadow stomp with 10%. Especially when shadow stomp goes off, that 10% um, attack speed plus five for five seconds is really essential for throwing out all your moves at the at a time. And that's uh, pretty much it. Um, in terms of these absolute throwing kick, I might pick this up later, simply because I believe it takes in the damage of your block jump, and the block jump uh, leeches damage off based off of your throwing kick or your basic attack, or um, if you go behind them when the awakening uh, block jump, then if you crimson eclipse and you go behind somebody, it causes a stun instead. Uh, whereas in pre-awakening it does not do such a thing, it just causes stiffness and possibly stun. It used to st cause stun to people, but even though it doesn't say that, um, so that's that's one of the main things. I mainly have it because it also gives 12 AP and more versatility in, in moving around and and things. And also throwing kick damage and floating. Oh, this causes floating now. We might have changed this operation of the skill a little bit. So yeah, pretty much um, you just you want to use like all your skills if you can. If you, if you want a weapon switch, uh, weapon switching with tendon cutter is quite important. Uh, sometimes I just tendon cutter straight into a uh, ankle cutter. Uh, you have to try and position yourself like next to your enemy. And then you just like... And then you probably don't want to cancel shadow clone with an absolute brace. Um, with WP is also an ongoing problem as well since pre-awakening barely regenerates any uh, WP. Um, so Absolute Brace actually, uh, when I brought it to Absolute level, it was actually quite nice. Um, everything seems to just regenerate just enough and just in time with the amount that I have. But combos is uh, it's, it's quite confusing at this point because there's just so many. Um, let's see, we're going to go... Ghost greeting, and then if you if you shadow stomp past the person, it's not good as well because they just fly off. Um, might be better off doing something else, like holding the shadow stomp, and then pick them up as well. Yeah, so that's it's a bit of a combo there, but. Uh, Practice on these soldiers, try and get your CC as long as possible. So that's uh that's that's pretty much absolute Kuno. Hopefully there's not too much to go about. Other than it's it's just I have my skill icons cooldown here as well now in just like a cross form. And then the bottom bottom here these four icons are pretty much the only ones I need quick slotted the rest I don't believe really need to be quick slotted they should just be able to be inputted by finger input and that's it so you can like a uh, smoke screen and then like shadow stomp and just double bounce them on the floor and flew away almost to the flagpole there Alright guys, so that's it for absolute kuno skills. I don't really know what else to go about other than that it's like a hand buster trying to get all this down. And then just getting all your skills like off as much as possible. And then also making sure you're not spinning around like a like a ballerina waiting on Shadow Stomp cooldown, <laughs> trying to cancel it properly. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope this gave you some insight to this uh, new update.
and sooner or later we should have the Rabam combination skills addition added as well, which is two more skills into the quick slot, which is going to be problematic. Until then, I'll.